Trinity, Pastor Sarah here. I am greeting you this morning from my office at the church. I know many of you have been here, but some haven't. And so um, this is my office, um, part of it anyway. The beautiful gold color back there I owe to the Crumb family for sharing paint with me when I first moved into this office. Um, but good morning. Um, why not take advantage of um, being online and by radio to do some different things than we're used to doing. Welcome to you, by the way, whether you're by Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, or, um, or by radio. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube, please comment, like, share. Um, it's so wonderful how you do that each week. Um, you continue to share this service and other services with our neighbors and our loved ones. And I hear from all kinds of people about the blessings that they've received as a result of you sharing. Also this morning, happy Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving week. And as we kick off worship today, I'd like to share with you a special blessing from some of your downtown pastors here in Greenville that we put together. Out of love for our neighbors, the Greenville Green County Ministerial Association has chosen not to gather in person for the annual community Thanksgiving service. We will definitely miss being together, but we can still give thanks. Here's a word of blessing from some of Greenville's downtown pastors. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for medical personnel, for first responders, for government officials, for all those who keep us safe, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for educators, teachers, parents, grandparents, and students. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord our God for families, friends, neighbors, far and near. For the love of God endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for essential workers, store clerks, restaurant staff, city employees, and delivery drivers. God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for anyone who taught or learned Zoom this year and for all the technologies that allow us to stay connected to one another. For God's love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for the ongoing communal and individual ministries of our churches online and in person. For all people of faith, for God's steadfast love endures forever. I'll give thanks to the Lord for knowledge that informs us, for your Holy Spirit that sustains us, by God's steadfast love, which endures forever. I'll give thanks to the Lord for the Greenville Green County Community Ministries, for the Director Carmen, her staff, and for the food bank, for God's steadfast love endures forever. 
Please remember to give as you are able to the Greenville Community Ministry with food and monetary donations. Happy Thanksgiving, Greenville. Speaking of the Ministry Center, they have asked our church to partner with them in providing um, angel trees. And we have a handful of young people left to be adopted um, that our church is responsible for. So if you're able to adopt an angel, um, please reach out this week to the church office and let us know. Um, if you aren't comfortable um, shopping right now, you can contribute money and we have people that will shop for you. So please help us get those angels covered. Um, the presents are due by Thursday, December 10th, uh, between 4 and 6 p.m. Ron Bennett and I will be here to accept your gifts and offerings. Also, I hope that you received in the mail a special um, magnet from me that just reminds us of our um, a connectedness together and just reminds us that, um, that we're all thankful for each other and that we're all doing the best we can during this time um, where we have these tools to gather together. So I hope that you got that magnet. It says, We go to church in many ways, by radio, online, and in person with masks, yet we are one in our faith, in our baptism, and in our commitment to be the church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. That reminds me of one other thing that I'd like to share this morning with our church family. Um, I've heard from a couple of people this past week that they would like some way to get updates on people who are sick or ill or have things going on in our congregation. Um, but there's just not a great way to do that right now without compromising a person's privacy because I don't want to share those prayer concerns in our online service or by radio. The best way to get that information is to call the church office or to contact me directly and I'll be glad to share with you um, about those prayer concerns. I love how well you as a church family keep up with one another and please continue to do that. Friends, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day by joining in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. We will give thanks to the Lord with our whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord, wondered by all who delight in God. Full of honor and majesty is the work of God. God's righteousness endures forever. Come, worship God with gladness and thanksgiving. May we come before the Lord with a glad and generous heart. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's had a good week and stayed safe and hopefully no one's sick this week. Uh, I wish we could be together, but it's better that we stay safe and we do our children's message through our video again this week. And this week is a special week, isn't it, Hadley? What happens this week? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, right. And some of you will go to school Monday, some of you go to school on Tuesday if you go to school. But then the rest of the week we get to celebrate with our families, don't we? And we'll have a good meal, won't we? We will. Let's think about what Thanksgiving's all about. We, we need to remember the pilgrims. The pilgrims lived in England, and they wanted to worship God as God wanted them to worship Him, and they weren't allowed to. There were some really strict rules on them, and they thought, we need to go somewhere that we can worship God like God wants us to. So they got on this big ship. Do you remember the name of it? Mayflower. The Mayflower. And they sailed and they sailed on the water and they got to the America. And when they got there, it was kind of cold. And then they soon ran out of food. But they had met some really, really nice folks, the Native Americans. And the Native Americans taught them many things. They taught them how to raise food so that they wouldn't be hungry. And that first fall, the when the food came in that summer, they had so much food, they thought, we need to celebrate. We thanked God for the food, but we need to celebrate with our friends, the Native Americans who taught us how to raise our food. So they invited them to come and have a big meal. And I guess that's how Thanksgiving meals got started, do you think? But they also wanted to thank God that they were finally in a country where they could worship God like God wanted them to. And I've got a little prayer I want to share with you to help you remember some things to thank God for. And it comes with M&Ms. So, Hadley, pick a color of M&M. What color did you pick? Red. Red. So, 
on Thanksgiving and every day, when you eat a red M&M, I want you to remember to pray for somebody that you love. Can you remember that? Okay, eat the red one and in your head, pray and thank God for somebody that you love. Okay, what's your next color? Orange, orange. I want you to remember when you eat orange M&Ms that you need to pray for those that are sick. And we know a lot of folks that are sick right now. And we need to thank God for our healthcare workers and those who help take care of people when they're sick. So eat an orange M&M. What color you got next? What color? Green, green. As you eat the green M&M, I want you to thank God for one good thing that he has given you. He gives you so many, but think of one thing and say a silent prayer for that thing that God has blessed you with. Can you eat your, and say a prayer? Okay. Now what color? Yellow. Let's see. As you eat the yellow one, we need to pray for our leaders, those people that are in charge, that God has put in charge of our country, and we they need our prayers right now. So can you pray for them? Okay. And blue. I want you to think of a friend or a neighbor that maybe doesn't go to church, and we need to pray for them that they know that God loves them too, don't we? So let's thank God for our friends and neighbors. And the last one. Brown. You know what you need to remember to pray for? You need to remember to pray for yourself. You can pray if you're worrying or if there's something bothering you or if you've done something you need to be forgiven for, that you're sorry for. Pray to God and ask God to forgive you and help you through the hard times. So eat your brown one and think about that. Okay, so remember the M&M &M prayer. And if you get our email on Friday, I sent you some of this to you on our email. And if you don't get it, call the church office and I'm sure they'll be glad to send that to you. But you know, Hadley, we're going to be thankful on Thanksgiving Day. But should that be the only day we say thank you to God? No. No. When, when else should we do it? Every day. Every day. We need to thank God every day. Psalms 105 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And we need to remember to thank Him every day. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Thank you, God, for family and friends. Thank you for the clothes we wear and the food we eat. Thank you, God, for laughter and fun. Thank you, God, for our beautiful world. And we give you thanks and praise for your love. Amen. Have a good Thanksgiving, everybody. See you next week. Holy God, this week we turn toward Thanksgiving. We have been conditioned to show our gratitude in the month of November with pledge drives, gratitude calendars, pumpkins and cornucopias, and with little kids in pilgrim hats and feather headdresses, and all manner of stories of early European settlers and their relationship with the natives that they met upon their arrival. Parts of that story, Lord, are worth celebrating while others are worthy of great confession. But it all culminates in a celebration over turkey and pumpkin pie with members of our biological family or our family by choice. Every year there are some of us who do not have anywhere to go, who do not have enough food, or who no longer have the family they love with which to gather due to death, separation, or some other kind of pain. And every year we make room to pray for those who are without to offer invitations for those who need a place to go and to share food by giving to families in need. This year, we all find that we are sharing a feeling of without. No matter if our Thanksgiving table looks very different from years past or exactly the same, help us to be grateful for what we have, for our loved ones and our church. May the spirit of this week still fill our hearts and may we first and foremost be thankful to you. As the hymn says, Now thank we all our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done, in whom the earth rejoices, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way, with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. 
O may our bounteous God, through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us all in his love, and guide us by his grace, and free us from all ills, protect us by his might. With those words still ringing in our ears, hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The scripture for today is taken from the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 8 through 12. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now at last by God's will the way may be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may mutually encourage by each other's faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning again to all of you. I'm glad that you're here for worship today. As always, I'd like to begin by thanking our wonderful musicians and church staff. Thank you, Rachel, for the work that you do in preparing um, this service for us. Thank you, Miss Susie and Hadley, for your beautiful children's messages. Thank you, Jerry, for reading the scripture for us today. It really takes all of us, and it takes you all, tuning in on the radio, by YouTube, and Facebook. Um, any feedback that you can give us is helpful, and we are grateful for it. Um, so thank you for tuning in week after week. I brag on this church to friends all over because I think that you're an amazing group of people and that God has called us to do amazing ministry and mission together, even in this very strange time. So I thank God for you. Let's begin with a word of prayer, shall we? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As a pastor, I am often with people during times of struggle and sadness and trouble. Whether it's around a death or an illness or a frustration or just a time in life when things feel like they're, um, they're out of line, I am invited into those sacred spaces, which I am grateful for. And oftentimes when I am in a moment like that with one of our church members or a friend or someone else, um, someone will make the observation that they don't know how people who do not have faith can get through difficult times. That observation is made so often. And I, I think that observation is a backward way of saying that a person is grateful for the gift of faith. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be grateful for faith? Well, faith by definition is that which we believe in but we cannot see. And yet it is our experience that even though we cannot see God, we experience God. We see the effect of God's action and work in our lives. And so faith, is that gift that we carry with us in our hearts that is always looking for hope, always looking for light and darkness. Faith is the gift that gives us strength when we think that we cannot take another step. It's by faith that we are given a peace which passes understanding at a time when peace should be far from us. It is faith which allows us to trust 
that God is good and that God is working toward good for all of us. It is faith which encourages us to continue going. Paul mentions this gift at the beginning of his letter to the Roman church, celebrating the gift of faith, the way in which the, the people in the Roman church have encouraged Paul by sharing their faith and the way that they are encouraged by Paul's faith. Faith, that testimony of God's gracious action in our lives. In preparation for the sermon this week, I asked the couple in our church who have had a profound experience of faith recently to share about that experience and about the work that God has called them to do. Did you know that Zambia is currently one of the fastest growing Christian nations and that the United Methodist Church has been establishing small village churches throughout Zambia for years? Zambians are seeking and embracing the gospel message of Jesus Christ in a powerful way. Rick and I have been visiting Zambia since 2006 and watched the growth firsthand. We've led four work teams from the U.S. to Zambia that have helped with the construction of village churches, gone into numerous villages, and held vacation Bible schools and hosted weekend Bible camps. But in 2013, we began thinking, Okay, Lord, isn't this enough? We've done everything you've asked us to do, haven't we? Well, that was not at all what God was thinking. God proceeded to open our eyes and hearts to the great educational needs of Zambian children. He showed us we had only just begun. You see, the national language of Zambia is English, but a large majority of the children, especially in northern Zambia, grow up speaking only their native African dialect. Without their being able to speak, read, and write English, they have little chance of getting out of the cycle of poverty. Zambia is also a country where almost an entire generation has died of malaria, AIDS, and tuberculosis, leaving large numbers of orphans and vulnerable children. We weren't done. God spoke to us very clearly about using these village churches as the place to start Christian-based preschools. When Rick and I got back to the U.S., we began fundraising and the Ed Project began to take shape. In April 2015, Rick and I brought suitcases filled with school supplies back to Zambia and the first preschool teacher training class took place using an African-created course called Let's Speak English. And since then, three more teacher training classes have been held. I think I've been learning as much from these village teachers as they have been from me. I've learned that there is no way I can train them the way I would train teachers in the U.S. To begin with, some of these teachers hadn't even completed high school themselves. Secondly, they had no supplies or books to work with. But they try to work through all of this because they have a passion for teaching the children of their community. One teacher told me some of these children have never been to any kind of school and are almost 10 years of age. Zambian children are bright and eager to learn. They just need a chance. Children are a country's future. The Ed Project is trying to make a difference. In addition to teacher training, we continue to bring and ship over school supplies, teacher materials, and children's books. Plus, Rick builds tables, storage cabinets, and easels for these schools. Whenever we travel and work in Zambia, we go in faith and trust that the Lord will guide and protect us. This year was a prime example of this. When we went over in March, we had no idea our stay would be extended by five weeks. Because of the coronavirus, we could not get back to the U.S., but through it all, God was there in a powerful way. Schools were closed soon after we arrived and we could not work with the children or teachers. But the extra time allowed us to clean and repair and paint the schools. The teacher training class scheduled was in jeopardy of being canceled. But in faith, we proceeded with the week-long training. It turned out to be one of our most successful sessions so far, and we all stayed healthy. Because of the extra time, Rick was able to help missionary Delbert Groves with projects that had been put off previously because of the lack of time. Because of the extra time, we were still in Zambia when the cargo container 
full of school supplies, educational toys, classroom furniture, and books arrived from the U.S. Rick and I were able to unpack, organize, and distribute these needed resources. We were concerned about our medications running out, but God got us home with five days of medication to spare. We were concerned about the exposure to the virus on the long and unprotected flight from Zambia to the U.S. through Ethiopia, but God covered us with his protective hand. Through all of this, we felt covered in prayer and greatly blessed. We can't even begin to express how thankful we are for your prayers and the way God continually guides and protects. Kathy and Rick, thank you so much for sharing your story in Zambia with us, especially the part about this year and the experience of not knowing when you would return home and having to trust that God um, would see you through that time. I know from this, from our perspective, that we were all um, diligently worrying and praying and hoping um, for news of your safe return. So thank you for sharing that experience of faith with us. Friends, the experience of faith, the stories of our faith can be the big, amazing, wonderful, awe-inspiring stories like what Kathy had to share. They can also be amazing and wonderful and awe-inspiring and happen in our everyday lives. When God shows up to give us the strength that we need, the words that we need, the reminder to be quiet when we want to speak, when God sees us through difficult times, that faith which fills our hearts and minds, which then allows us to be people who in the world are forgiving to others, who are gracious, who are slow to judge, who are welcoming to others to a fault, who are willing to love our neighbors and do what it takes to love them well to be people who say yes to opportunities for mission and ministry, to be people who trust that resources will show up just when we need them because God is always one, two, ten steps ahead of us. And if we are looking for the people around us that need a word from God, then God is already at work and we are stepping into what God is already doing. I'm grateful to the Apostle Paul for the reminder to be grateful also for this gift of faith, this faith which encourages each of us to continue to take the next step, the next breath, which encourages us to keep looking for those places where God shows up in great hope and light and peace and love. Friends, God bless you this week. It's my prayer that this week, you will have a profound experience, a feeling as if God has swept over you and reminded you that you are safely in God's care and in God's hands. Thanks be to God. Amen.